I honestly believe this is a golf club which, if put in 95% of golfers' bags, would help dramatically lower your scores and improve your game. Hi everyone, my name is James Robinson, welcome to this YouTube channel. In today's video, I not only have a brand new Ping G430 fairway wood, but I have the Ping G430 7 fairway wood. You see guys, gone are the days where having a high lofted fairway wood in your bag would be something to be embarrassed about. In fact, some of the world's best golfers do. And this one, oh look at that. This one seems so easy to get on with. I've never contemplated putting one of these in my golf bag until now. Chris has put one in, who was on my channel quite a lot, you might know him. He put one in quite a few years ago and he's never looked back. And this one particularly, just for me, sits it's a little bit nicer than the others. I love that head shape. I love that head size. It doesn't feel the best, but I've actually lofted this down. So it's playing more like a five wood. But then I can play shots like that. Look how low that one's come out because I've taken a little bit of loft off that. It's almost like a stinger shot straight down the middle of the fairway. And throughout the course of this video, we'll look at numbers, we'll discuss how far it goes, how much spin it gets, and what ball speed it gets. I'll also play around with the lofts inside and show you just how much you can change the ball flights and dynamics of this club so easily. I'll also talk through the tech in here as well because Ping's new line of G430s is jam packed full of them. Look at that ball flight that I've just hit there compared to the last one. Ping's new this line one, of G430s. Wow. This one it's seems so easy to get on Look with. Look at that ball flight that I've just hit there compared to the last one. Two totally different ball flights, yet both bang at that fairway marker down the middle. And this is why I think 95, if not 100% of golfers could learn from some of the best golfers in the game, put one of these in the bag, for if you're struggling off the tee, for if you're struggling from a certain yardage out on the fairway, or even on par threes, and especially have it in the bag if you struggle out of the rough from certain distances as well. Look how close those two balls are in the fairway. I'm gonna replay those ball flights now as well, because that, of G430s, I can play shots like that, really does go to show how you can get two totally different ball flights with the same golf club that finish in pretty much exactly the same place. And there's a time and a place for both those shots with this club. And just as you would imagine, this particular version that the Ping G437 would does feature all the good stuff that's in the G430 range. So we have that carbon fly wrap, we have that face wrap technology. Look at that strike, the higher earlier, by the way. That's one thing about these clubs with black faces, one gets some mud or sand there, and I mean, that might upset a few people, I suppose. But we also have the tungsten sole weight at the back that is obviously designed to move CG back to increase MOI. And the big thing for me is that face wrap technology it's almost like a variable face thickness, so you do get a little bit more forgiveness if you don't get the middle. But hopefully, you just strike it like that every time. That's how I envisage me hitting this club. Little divot after the ball, lovely turf interaction, nice big high ball flight, and just seeing that ball bound down the fairway. That, for me, is what this club is all about. It's not the most sexy thing in the bag, but it's there to do a job and do it incredibly well. Let's talk about out the rough. But just before we do so, I'd, I'd like to show you the evidence and the proof. That is another one smack down the middle of this fairway on line with the flag. Right, you'll have to excuse me because we don't have a lot of rough here at the moment. Obviously it is winter, there's not a lot of growth, but for me, this club is perfect for deep rough, for rough like this, which is just a little bit stodgy and a little bit thick. You wouldn't really want to be hitting a less lofted fairway out of here. We've got around 200 into the wind. Can we get there? I'm not even thinking that getting there is the optimum result here. Obviously it would be fantastic, but if I can just progress this forward anywhere near the green, that's exactly what this club is designed for. It's more of a, dare I say a rescue club without being a hybrid or a rescue club. But you don't have to always try and play these high. There's that much loft on there. Obviously I've taken some loft off for this video. But there's that much loft on there, I can get a little bit steeper into it, present less dynamic loft because there's more static loft, and hopefully hit a shot like this, more of a punch. Look at that. That's come out like an absolute bullet. Go on. Oh, front bunker. 
That was so close to being good as well. But I've struck that out of the middle, I've hit down on it. I'll show you the turf interaction in just a second. But if it sat a little bit better, you know what? We'll use the we'll use that to clean the face off. But now it sat a little bit better. I can try and play that high one because again, this is the seven wood and it can do this. Look at that go. Oh, it's going ever so slightly right, which is a shame. I caught it toe but that is literally flag high. I could probably put that if I wanted to. That's out of the rough from 200 yards into the wind. Again, it's not the sexiest club in the bag, but it really doesn't mind doing the nitty gritty. So I put that as a thumbnail and see if people will watch. Not sure they will. Would you watch that? I don't know. Comment below. So guys, obviously this isn't just a problem with pink golf clubs, it's a problem with all golf clubs with black faces on them. Would this affect you? Would this bother you? If you've just spent £300 on this golf club, would it bother you that it now looks like this just a few weeks later? Guys, get in the comments below and let me know. This is what my title is about today. That I think this is a big problem for some brands where if you're, I mean, I don't care what golf clubs look like particularly, but if you are very, very fanatically about that, I think that's the right word, but if you care about this a lot, would it would it make you go for something else? Guys, get in the comments below and let me know. I've not really got my words out that well there, but I wanted to address it because I think it's something that some people might be upset by. So you can see two very different ground interactions there. That was the first shot, so I've hit down on it, took a nice divot, and this was the resulting ball flight. The second one, I tried just to pick it a little bit more, a lot less ground disturbance. And again, two totally different ball flights down towards that flag. So let's jump in the simulator room. Let's see just what happens to this club when we do play around with the lofts on it. For me, this is one of the fantastic things that the G430 Max does offer. It features that adjustable weight, whereas some of the other seven woods on the market, it's 21 degrees, it's 22 degrees, and that's all you're getting. So for me, that's a huge bonus as to why this is probably one of the better ones of the year. Guys, get in the comments below. Would you like to see me test all the seven woods on the market? TaylorMades, the Pings, the Callaways, the Mizunos, the Titleists, and see which one performs better and by perform better I suppose you're thinking consistency wise that last shot that last shot obviously this is the tee shot from earlier look at that for a result from that far out to that flag yes please let's talk some numbers so guys, I took this new Ping G437 wood into the studio to test it for numbers, and it was really important for me that I tried to put just some consistent swings on it. You can see that that first ball flight, really, really nice high ball flight, pitching around 215 to 220 yards, and you can probably see just a nice rhythm in my swing here today because I'm not trying to smash this out the park. I'm not trying to hit it 250, 260 yards because that would be pointless. You can see again there another high ball flight, but with a club like this, you need to know how far it's going to go. Yes, when you get it out the middle, but you also need to know how far it's going to go when you get it toey, when you get it healy. Because if you're playing a par 3 over water, if you're playing into a long par 5 over water with this club, then you need to know just how it's going to react. So for me, I really, really enjoyed the consistency of this. So you can see I hit a toey shot there. It's gone a little bit left and a little bit low, but still nothing too bad. The overall dispersion with this is fantastic for a club that's traveling kind of 220 yards in the air. I actually tested the tailor-made version and the Callaway version of the Seven Woods as well. You can see the ping probably was quite consistent. It was actually the most consistent if you look at the standard deviation of just four yards. Didn't have quite as much ball speed, but spun a little bit less as well. So very interesting numbers there for three of the big hitters. There's a full video coming soon of this comparison. So some very interesting and thought-provoking numbers there with this Seven Wood. There's really not that much left to say. Apart from, let's just send another one down this fairway. I might play a little bit of a draw this time, just keep it nice and in play. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, smash that subscribe button below. Apart from that, I'll see you all exactly the same time tomorrow. Bye.